Welcome to our online. Now we're ready to tackle a bridge circuit. How do we know that we're dealing with a bridge circuit when this is the initial circuit that was given to us? Well, sometimes by redrawing the circuit, it may become obvious. So let's go ahead and label some of our branch points. Let's call this, uh, let me use a different color. Let's call this a branch point one. Let's call this branch point two, and let's call this branch point three. And let's see how that converts into this circuit. That should be the exact equivalent circuit. Let's see, branch point one would be this one right here. So this is branch point one. Then when we go across the inductor here, when we get to this point, that would be branch point two. Notice in one direction we go across the 8 ohm resistor, in the other direction we go across this capacitor. And on the other side, this should be branch point three. And indeed, we came from the capacitor here, then we can go across the resistor, or we can go across the inductor and the resistor there. So it looks like that's the equivalent circuit. And now it quite obviously becomes a bridge circuit. Now, trying to solve it like this becomes very difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these three branches right here, and we recognize that as being a delta branch or a delta circuit, we're going to convert that into a Y circuit. So this is becoming a delta to Y conversion. When we do that, instead of having something that looks like this, we'll have something that looks like this, and then we'll connect that to the bottom two branches right here, which are these two branches right here, and then we have a circuit that's much easier to solve. We're keeping our 12 ohm resistor right here. Of course, that only has the real part. We don't have an imaginary part there. And let's now go ahead and try to find out what Z1, Z2, and Z3 is. At that point, we'll stop on this video, then we'll continue on the next video, and we'll finish the problem. Hopefully, we can do it in two videos, because we only have so much board space. So how do you find Z1? Well, Z1 is equal to, now notice that this goes right in here, so we take the product of those two branches and divide it by the sum of the three branches. So that's the product of these two divided by the sum of all three right here. So that becomes J4 multiplied times 2 minus J4, all divided by the sum of all three branches, which is J4, added to 2 minus J4, and added that to the last one, which is 8. So here we multiply the numerator, we first multiply these two together, j times j is a negative 1, times the negative 1 becomes positive, and so that we get 4 times 4, which is 16, and then multiply this times this, that becomes plus j8, all divided by, here we have a plus j4 and a minus j4, they cancel out, and a 2 plus 8 gives us 10, and if we divide that into the numerator, it gives us 1.6 plus j0.8. So that becomes the impedance of this portion of the Y. And so let's plug that in here. That gives us 1.6 plus J 0.8. All right, now we're ready to find Z2. Z2 is over here. So that means we're going to take the product of those two branches divided by the sum of the three. Of course, we already have the sum calculated here. So this portion right here goes in here, so we take the product of those two divided by the sum. So Z2 becomes J4 multiply it times 8 and divide that by, of course we already know what the sum is of all three branches. So this becomes equal to J32 divided by 10 which is equal to J3.2 and that goes right here. So this is J3.2. And finally, we need to find Z3. Now Z3, that's this part of the Y branch right there. So when we go over here, that's the product of these two divided by the sum of all three. So we have eight multiplied times two minus J4, all divided by 10. So we multiply this together, we get 8 times 2, which is 16, minus 8 times 4 is 32, so it's J32, divided by 10, which is 1.6 minus J3.2. Now we come over here, we plug that in here, so we have 1.6 minus J3, whoop, 3.2. It's not a very good looking 3 there. 
There we go. All right, so now we have converted our delta into a y. And notice we have to find the three impedances of the y. Now these two are easy to add and those two are easy to add. So now we can go ahead and combine this circuit into a simplified circuit. We can combine these two together into a single impedance. And then each of the two branches, we can combine those two impedances into a single impedance on each side of the branch. Like this. For the top impedance right here, when we combine these two, 12 plus 1.6 gives us 13.6 plus J 0 0.8. And then when we combine these two together, there's no real parts, only imaginary parts. So this is uh, a plus 3.2 minus 3 gives us a plus. Let's see, where do I put that? How about right here? So that would be a J 0 0.2 for the left branch. And for the right branch, when we add these two together, we have a 9.6, that's 8 plus 1.6, and we combine the imaginary parts, that would be plus J 2.8. So now we have a simplified circuit. We've taken the circuit that looks like this, put into a format. We can clearly see that we have a delta or a bridge circuit. So we take the top delta portion, convert into a Y portion right here, and so then these three impedances in a delta format will now look like three impedances in a Y format, and then we can easily combine that with the other branches to simplify it down to this circuit. Now we're going to do the second video to complete this, uh, the concept here. What we're going to do is find the total impedance of this, and then we're going to find the current in the circuit based upon the voltage input that we have right here. And that's how it's done.